This is Goody Reader News with Michael Kozlowski. Barnes & Noble Nook sales for their e-readers and tablets have decreased 62% year-on-year according to recent financial quarterly results. This is totally abysmal. We're looking at the Nook segment, including digital content devices and accessories have only had $78 million worth of sales in a quarter, which is decreased over 50% year on year. Uh, device and, and hardware sales, and this includes like Nook e-readers, uh, the Samsung Galaxy for Nook tablets, as well as uh, the cases, screen protectors, they only garnered $37 million, which of course is down 62.8% from a year ago. Digital content sales were $41 million. This includes eBooks and uh, digital magazines, digital newspapers. They were declined over 29% from a year ago. So everything is down. And this isn't too much of a surprise. Almost every time I read Barnes & Noble quarterly results, it's always declines. It's declines year on year. It's diminished revenue, diminished profit. How can Barnes & Noble basically churn everything around? Well, it, they have challenges challenges. Prime, the, I would probably say the biggest challenge facing Nook right now is the old guard and the new guard. You figure everyone who works for Nook is digital savvy. Uh, they've been hiring a lot of former Zinio executives, which is the magazine subscription service for a low monthly fee, you read as many magazines as you want. They've been hiring a lot of key people from the tech industry, but everyone's accountable to the old guard. These are like the board that runs the bookstores that have been running them for like 10, 20, 30, 40 years. They're, these are the people that live and breathe traditional book selling. So you gotta figure that there's gotta be a lot of headbutting between the digital people and the people that are tra traditional booksellers. And this is why Barnes & Noble is planning to spin the Nook franchise into its own autonomous company. This is similar what Barnes & Noble strategy has been with the college bookstores. Recently, Barnes & Noble has formulated a separate company just for the college bookstores so in the future we'll have the Barnes & Noble bookstores the college bookstores and then a Nook Media division which is three separate companies I think that having the Nook Media division as its own separate company will allow them to have a little bit more autonomy to be able to take more risks to be able to not be accountable to people that don't understand digital media digital distribution hardware and software if we ever have new products like the Samsung Galaxy 4 Nook, which pretty well all the media lambasted into damnation. They said it sucked. There was no reason why Barnes & Noble should have released these products. It's the only Barnes & Noble tablet that they've ever produced that does not even say Nook on it. It doesn't even say Barnes & Noble on it. All it has is Samsung branding all over it. If you were to have the device powered off, you would just say, hey, it's a Samsung tablet. And Barnes & Noble's latest e-reader, the Nook Glow Light, which was, I believe, released in 2014, um, it, was, it was garbage. It was plasticky, it was flimsy, it wasn't really too good. It wasn't a leap forward. Whereas the Kindle Voyage, it was a leap forward in e-readers. Uh, the Kobo H2O, it was a leap forward. It was, uh, not only did it, does it have tremendous resolution, but it's waterproof. Barnes & Noble really hasn't um, done anything compelling in a number of years. And I really think that in order to stimulate ebook sales, they have to release great hardware that people would want to buy. Right now, Barnes & Noble is shooting themselves in the foot. They focus primarily on the US and UK market. The US market in particular is saturated to hell. You, you figure Amazon controls 78% of the ebook market in North America. So what's left over is split between everybody. Um, Kobo, Google, Barnes & Noble, Zinio, <laughs> uh, not to mention companies that participate in the library space, Overdrive, 3M, Baker & Taylor. I mean, 
people in North America just have a copious amount of options to deal with. They don't have to just deal with Barnes & Noble. They can deal with as many companies as they want. And the UK is not much better. Amazon controls roughly about 62 to 68% of all UK ebook sales. And that's Barnes & Noble's only other market. Barnes & Noble has to expand into other foreign markets in order to really have some market share. That's been Kobo's successful strategy. That's also been Amazon's strategy. Amazon is in Japan, they're in China, uh, they're in a ton of Eastern and Western European markets, New Zealand, Australia, uh, Kobo's in, in those exact same markets. And this is how the blueprint to run a successful ebook business is done. You expand into so many markets that you are ubiquitous with you think of bookstores and ebooks, you think of Amazon or you think of Kobo. No one else is in the equation anymore. Sony closed their ebook store. They used to be relevant, but they're no longer anymore. Barnes and Noble is not relevant because of the ultra competitive North American and UK market, which is their only focus. So it's no small wonder that their sales are cumulatively sinking because they're being crushed under the weight of competition. So what does Barnes and Noble have to do? Well, I figure they have to expand or they have to die. They have to start selling ebooks in Germany, in Spain, in France. Uh, they have to expand to other core markets where it's easy to get into. Publishers already sell ebooks in foreign languages. They have to partner up with other companies in order to get their titles done. They have to start stocking self published titles done under Nook Press in their Barnes and Noble Nook and in, inside their actual bookstores. They, the list goes on. I mean, if Barnes and Noble wants to turn things around, they have to do things differently. Sadly, they have just seem to be maintaining the status quo and the status quo is going to be the final nail in the coffin for this company. For Goody Reader News, my name is Michael.